okay uh we thank our lord for giving uh, one more opportunity to listen and discuss his wonderful words of life uh, so last uh, few days uh, we studied our important uh, subject in the bible that is uh, the soul the human soul dies and the word hell in the bible is actually uh, you see the grave the condition of death and hell is not a place of torment uh, we have seen all the things in the uh, last week so immediately the naturally the question comes to our mind is that then uh, is there no judgment what is the meaning of the judgment day what will happen uh, during the judgment day what does the bible says about judgment day so today we are going to study about this uh, uh, judgment uh, uh, day uh, so the general belief is that uh, jesus is going to come at the uh, second coming so when he is going to return at the uh, second coming you see all the world will see uh, him come on the clouds and everybody will wail and everybody will uh, you see beat their heart and even those who pierce him uh, shall uh, uh, wail uh, because uh, jesus is coming and as soon as jesus comes uh, what happens uh, you see all the graves uh, will open when all the dead bodies are uh, dead you see uh, they will be raised and uh, they will be judged uh, so judgment will happen for all the dead all the dead persons uh, will come back back to life uh, on this uh, same uh, earth and uh, this will uh, you see all this uh, you see souls will go to heaven and stand before uh, the great white throne of our lord uh, jesus christ and uh, judgment will happen for everybody so uh, when jesus uh, is uh, sitting on a great white throne so he will be having books and uh, that is called the book of life and the book of life uh, will be opened and once the book of life is opened each and every persons uh, each and every deed good or bad everything uh, is totally recorded in that book uh, and everybody will be judged uh, as per that book uh, so jesus will count each and everybody since everybody's name will be called one by one they will be standing in a queue one by one they will come and stand before christ and christ uh, will uh, uh, tell all the sins before them that you in such and such day you did such and such deed you see and uh, those who are done uh, a bad thing they will be all thrown to hell hell fire and they will be screaming and crying and uh, you see even if they plead uh, what christ also christ won't forgive them uh, so they will be burned forever and ever so they will be keeping on burning they will also be keeping on burning so nothing will happen to them they'll only scream 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 that pain will be there but they won't die uh, what a wonderful hell fire and the worms uh, won't uh, die the worms will crawl over them everything and uh, those who are done uh, you see the good deeds uh, you see in the name of christ uh, those who believe jesus uh, you see and uh, what about them you see those people uh, you see uh, they will go to heaven the paradise uh, even though they would uh, you see they uh, they have sinned uh, after becoming christian also yes uh, they will still go to uh, heaven uh, you see because uh, Uh, they have believed in uh, uh, jesus christ uh, you see so all their sins are forgiven and they will be you see taken to uh, paradise and uh, uh, they will be happy along with all the holy angels uh, you see this is the concept of judgment and uh, this judgment will happen in one day it seems uh, 24 hours imagine in 24 hours for the whole world whole dead world to be uh, uh just uh, i think uh, jesus will surely have a super computer it will be in less than one second that everybody will be judged and all the deeds will be uh, you see told them so this is uh, you see the general uh, concept of judgment okay see dear brethren uh, already huh? uh, when a man dies uh, huh? what would have happened a judgment would have happened no huh? the soul would have come out uh, you see and you would have gone and stand before god uh, then itself judgment would have passed eh? correct no as soon as a man dies the judgment would have happened everybody does the same thing then if already the judgment has happened when a man has died then why one more judgment at the second coming 
the which is the judgment we should believe whether judgment will happen as soon as a man dies whether he will go to hell or heaven or does it really happen at the second coming what is the truth dear brethren you see so the these uh, thoughts uh, are uh, from the various uh, you see uh, uh, scriptures uh, which uh, give a wrong uh, interpretation you get these views uh, so let us uh, see those views uh, about the false interpretation of uh, you see these uh, uh, verses uh, uh, how the judgment will happen and the wicked will go to hell and uh, the holy persons and the good persons will go to heaven so let us read hebrews 927 hebrews 927 uh, peter brother can you read brother okay it is appointed for man to die once but after this the judgment hmm it is appointed for a man to die once after judgment so brother very clear no after death there is judgment it is appointed to die as soon as a man dies then after judgment aha uh -huh. if this is truth then the judgment should have happened for everybody all the dead people all the wicked people let us see what does the bible say what does jesus say he is the judge no let us ask him matthew 1124 brother but i say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of sodom in the day of judgment than for the see yeah jesus says it will be more tolerable to sodom and gomorrah in the day of judgment than for israel that means even the judgment for sodom and gomorrah is not over it seems then there is a clear proof the judge himself is saying the judgment will happen in the future not a sorry happen as soon as a man dies this is very clear you see and moreover uh, jesus rose lazarus from the dead you see the lazarus who came back from the dead huh? did he give any witness that oh i went to heaven i was standing before a great white throne books were opened there was judgment given to me and uh, they sent me to heaven i roamed about in hell heaven everything then uh, i came back uh, you see is it given there no let us read john 11:43 and when he thus had spoken he cried with a loud voice lazarus come forth see lazarus come forth did he come from heaven huh? after judgment is over huh? Huh? what double acting huh? one judge is already there in heaven another judge is on earth is coming is calling him back for that huh? then what is the meaning of judgment now what is the meaning of hebrews 9 chapter actually if you read correctly hebrews 9 chapter is not at all speaking about human beings it is speaking about the great high priest you see we have seen and studied about the subject about the tabernacle you see how the high priest once a year had to enter into the most holy and uh, he was supposed to enter with the blood and he has to sprinkle the blood on the ark of the covenant and if he commits any mistake even in his thoughts at that place he would die on the spot and that was the judgment for him imagine if he dies what would they do hence they had tied a rope for his hip and sent him inside if he doesn't come then it's clear proof that he died and you would pull up the dead body you see this is speaking about the high priest let us read the verse brother let us read from verse 24 to 28 now we'll come to understanding hebrews 9 chapter 24 to 28 Okay for Christ did not enter a man made sanctuary that was only a copy of the true one he entered heaven itself now to appear for us in god presence ah, nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood that is not his own ah see here uh, is comparison is given to the high priest entering into the most holy the same way jesus entered into heaven 
Once for all, it seems. See the beautiful comparison. So this is being of the high priest, Lord Jesus Christ. Now continue, brother. Next, continue. Then Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But now he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Ah, you see? Ah, this one that Jesus did once for all by sacrificing himself. Next, continue, brother. Ah. Just, um, just as man is destined to die once and after that to face those men. Ah, so, see? Yeah. Here yeah, it's speaking about high priest and Jesus. And it's saying, as it is destined for a man to die, then judgment. Similarly, so all the above verses speaking about Jesus and the high priest, how can I suddenly speak about a human being? General human being, about everybody. No, this is speaking about the same high priest. It was as if the high priest was appointed to death and judgment. Isn't it? See, when he was taking the blood to the most only once a year, it was like appointing him to judgment that he would die. Anything could happen to him. So this is not speaking about a human being at all. A general human being. This is speaking about the high priest. Okay. Even then, if the judgment should have taken place, huh? what should happen? First of all, the dead should rise. No? Or it should come back to life. Now, where are the dead? When will the dead come back to life? What does the Bible say? Read First Thessalonians 4.16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the sound, with the voice of the arch jail and with the trump of God, the dead and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay. Jesus will return, then only the dead in Christ shall rise first. The Lord shall descend, then only dead in Christ shall rise first. Until then, none of the dead can come back to life. Then, how can already people go to heaven and hell huh? a judgment? How is this possible? Therefore, clearly Jesus said, the judgment will happen only at the second coming, not as soon as a man dies. Read Matthew 16, 27, brother. For the Son of Man shall come in the holy gl glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Ah, he shall come. Jesus shall come. Then... He shall reward every man according to his verse. Then only judgment will happen. Okay? Giving reward. Okay? Now judgment is for whom? Uh, sinners. Saint and sinners. Correct? No? So two groups will be there. Either it will be a sinner or a saint. So Jesus' judgment is going to do means he is going to separate these two people. Correct? No? Now, let us read one, one verse. First Corinthians 6 2, brother. Okay. Do you not know that he signs will judge the world? Mm. And if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge tribal cases? See, this verse says, don't you know that the saints shall judge the world? That means, where are the saints? Huh? They are not standing before Jesus in the queue among the wicked. The saints will be seated with Jesus and judging the world, it seems. So, if the saints are with Jesus on the throne, so who is before Jesus? Who is only sinners? All wicked people. Then why judgment? Lump sum, overall, at a time, we can send them to hell, no? Now, why judgment is required? It is not at all required. You see, Apostle Paul knows huh? That there is none righteous. Jesus doesn't know why. Eh? When Apostle Paul knows there is none righteous, then why judgment? Jesus doesn't know. Doesn't our Lord know that there is none righteous? Everybody has sinners. He knows. Then why is judgment? Therefore, judgment subject we need to study. Just we know we should not come to conclusion based on our weird thoughts. You see, judgment 
That word judgment is the Greek word krino. Krino in English means crisis. Crisis means what? It can be this way or that way. That is the crisis. Like for example, if a patient is in ICU, what will the doctor say? We can't say anything. Crisis. Uh -huh. And uh, in a judgment, there is a trial and a decision. Then only judgment will uh, come. So for judgment, these two things are very, very important. Like for example, imagine, you see, uh, the culprit, uh, the terrorist uh, was arrested. Uh, you see, so many criminals were also caught red-handed. You see, immediately as soon as they were caught uh, red-handed, uh, do you think uh, they were just hanged to death? They were uh, literally killed? No. You see, dear brother, what happened? Judgment went on. They were arrested. You see, trial went on. You see, the case was presented. Argument went on. The trial upon trial, the trial upon trial. Then only the decision was given. Hang them to death. So similarly, each and every judgment should have two things. One, a trial and another, a decision based on the trial. This is the same way that happened, uh, you see, in the Garden of Eden. Same way it has happened in the Garden of Eden. God had kept uh, Adam and Eve on trial, told them not to eat the forbidden fruit. You can eat all the fruit except the forbidden fruit. Uh, so that was a trial, the beginning of the trial when God told. But when Adam ate the forbidden fruit, what happened? Uh, sin and death enter into the world. Then God pronounced uh, that dying thou shall die. Decision was given. They were cast out of Garden of Eden. So these two things were composed of the judgment which God gave in the Garden of Eden. You see, they were cast out of uh, Garden of Eden. You see, into the unfinished world. Uh, so that was the first uh, judgment that took place in the Garden of Eden. And each and every mankind are condemned to death under the same first judgment. We are all condemned to death in the first judgment. Everybody of us are dying in Adam. We have studied this one in the ransom class. You see? So let us recollect a few verses. Jeremiah 31, 29, brother. And Romans 5, 12. Okay, in those days they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a short grave and the children's teeth are set on edges. Ah, in those days uh, they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sore grape and children's teeth are set on edge. Father Adam ate the forbidden fruit. What happened? All his children, all our teeth were set on edge. We were all condemned to death. Read Romans 5.12, brother. Therefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passes upon all men, for that all have sinned. Ah, see, by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and this death passed upon everybody, because God condemned everybody into sin in Adam. So each and every grave... Each and every pain, each and every sickness, sorrow is a proof that we are all dying in Adam. Okay. Now what does the Bible say? The Bible says God has appointed a day for judgment. Read Acts 17.31 brother. Huh? Because he had appointed a day in, in the uh, which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained, whereof he had given assurance into all men, in that he had raised him from the dead. See, God has appointed a day in which he judge the world in righteousness. No, if all the world already judged in Adam, condemned to death in Adam, now why there is a judgment again? Dear Buddhan, how can the other judgment come when already the first judgment is uh, still undergoing in process? How can you give a new judgment? Uh? You see, 
we need to understand this one. Why there is going to be one more judgment day? First of all, it says, you see, God has appointed a day. Right? Is it a literal day? No. You see, this is not a literal 24 hours day. In 24 hours, the whole world can't be. You see, just literally. See? But for our Lord, one day means how many years? How many years, brother? Thousand years. Very good. A thousand years. So a day with the Lord is a thousand years. A thousand years as a day. That means Jesus is here saying that God has appointed a day, a thousand year day. To judge the world in righteousness means that day is a period of thousand years. You see? Therefore, we read in the Bible about day. Hey, everywhere in the Bible, day is not 24 hours day. Like for example, it says, as it was in the days of Noah. So days of Noah means what? Is it really 24 hours day? No. It was a period in which Noah lived. So similarly, the day of judgment is what? The day in which Jesus will be as a judge and a ruler. Therefore, this is the judgment day, a period of thousand years. This verse, Acts 1731 also says, that God shall judge the world in righteousness. You see? That means this is not going to be an unrighteous judgment. This is going to be a just uh, trial. You see? And just uh, and righteous uh, judgment. So what do you mean by righteous judgment? You see? Jesus is not going to stand, make everybody stand in their queue and tell all their past sins and condemn again to death. Because they already experienced that uh, sin and penalty death. Then for which sins they are going to judge? They have learned for all our past sins who has experienced death. You see, Jesus has experienced death. Isn't it? We all know very well, no? See, what does the Bible say? Isaiah 53, 5, Buddha. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The justice man of our peace was upon him, and with his strips we are healed. Ah, see, he was wounded for our transgression. For our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities. All the judgment of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. That means all the punishment which as man we were supposed to receive, God gave to whom? Jesus. That means he's already been punished for our sins. Then is it right to again call somebody in a queue and tell them that you have sinned like this, this, this and give them the same punishment? How is the right of judgment, dear brother? Like for example, imagine if you are in Dubai, the rules are so that if you steal something, immediately they will give 50 lashes on the spot. Imagine we are in Dubai. So, we have stolen something. So, they have to give 50 lashes to us. Imagine the 50 lashes will be so severe. Just for a few lashes, they will tremble. They will shake. You see? And even uh, if they die also, they won't keep quiet. Huh? They will like, until they finish their lashes, they won't keep quiet at all. It seems. Imagine if you are in Dubai. Huh? We are supposed to receive this uh, 50 lashes. Instead of us, somebody else takes his 50 lashes. Then if again the, you see, judge come and tells, oh, come, brother, please come, I'll give you the balance 50. Is it correct? No. All our punishment, somebody has taken. So if you come and again punish me for the same thing, how right is it? That is not a right as judgment at all. Similarly, the entire word sin was born by Lord Jesus Christ. And again, just for why? For the past sins. You see, therefore, judgment is not to condemn the world. See, read John 3, 17, brother. Huh? For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that, he, that the world through him might be saved. See, God did not send his son to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. How? When? When Jesus returns the second coming, all the dead will come back to life on the same earth, back from the grave. 
Then, in his thousand years rule, the first thing Jesus is going to do is bind Satan for a period of thousand years. You see? Let us read Revelation 20, 1, 2, and 3, brother. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless feet and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bounded him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and sought, sought him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should de deceive the nations no more, till the th thousand years should be fulfilled. And till the thousand he years be fulfilled. See, he should uh, deceive the nations no more, till season. the Okay, so he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years are complete. So Satan is bound. Why? So that he might not deceive the nations sir, as he is doing now. You see, that is the reason today the God of this world has branded the eyes of many who don't believe the gospel because they are under the deception of the devil. But when Christ returns, he is going to bind everybody this is bind Satan for a thousand years so that everybody may come to the knowledge of truth. See, in the thousand years, huh? judgment, a thousand years, Jesus rule, a thousand years, Satan bound for a thousand years. And what will happen to the people? The people will learn the scriptures. They will learn the Bible. They will learn the word of God. Read Isaiah 26, 9, brother. With my soul have I Desire thee in the night, there will my spirit within me will I seek thee early for when the judgments are in the earth. The inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. See, when thy judgments are in the earth, when you're going to judge the world in righteousness for a thousand years, the inhabitants of the world will learn. Righteousness, not that they will go to hell and heaven. They will learn righteousness. It says, well, where is the righteousness? It is in the righteous word of God. Everybody is yours and everybody is, I shall be opened when Satan is bound. You see, Jesus said, he that has ears, let him hear. You see, and he that has, uh, you see, eyes, let him see. Jesus was not speaking about little eyes and little, uh, you see, ears. He was uh, speaking about the uh, Eyes of understanding, years of listening the truth. Isaiah 29, chapter 18 to 24 is clearly given there. You see, every deaf shall hear the word of God. Those who murmured shall see and understand the doctrine. You see, today, when we tell to people to come for the Bible class, how many, how many people will come? Not many. But in Christ's kingdom, everybody shall study the word of God. So hence, Jesus is going to rule for a thousand years. In thousand years, the man will be brought back from the fallen condition to the condition of perfectness in which Adam was lived. So, in, so that is the reason Jesus is being given a thousand years to bring man to perfection. This is the judgment. Now, you see, how is... Uh, how is this judgment? It will be the same way as it was in the Garden of Eden. You see? How? God, you see, placed Adam perfectly in the Garden of Eden. Then put him on trial. You see? But Adam failed in the trial. It is the same way that is going to be in a thousand years. Everybody shall be brought back from death. And they will be given the opportunity to understand the truth, understand God's words, and brought back to perfection, human perfection in the thousand years. Then last, what will God ask? Obedience. Obedience to the word of God. What will be the reward? The reward of the trial will be life. That was the same in Garden of Eden. No? God created Adam perfectly. 
created the tree told to show obedience what will be the reward everlasting life or everlasting death and in garden of eden the judgment are a trial the decision there was a beginning and end similarly in thousand years there is going to be judgment there is going to be beginning and end ends thousand years is fixed but only one difference between the first judgment and the last judgment is adam did not have experience about sin and evil and wickedness but in christ kingdom each and every person will have the knowledge of experience of evil so that will make a huge difference of man choosing good see how the judgment will be each and every person will be given a minimum 100 years opportunity to come back to god to turn to god each and every wicked person will be given at least minimum 100 years read isa 6520 brother ha there shall be no more dens and infants of the earth in front of in front in front of this nor an old man that had not till his days for the child shall die in 100 years old but the sinner begin in 100 years old shall be Uh, see, in thousand years, no more shall die like infant of days. As soon as they burn one or two day, one week, they die. No, no, they won't die. Seems so. Nor a old man was not filled his days. Nobody will die in a old man's age without filling his days. You see, earlier managed to live for how many years? Nine hundred years. But today, ninety years, eighty years. Some people die at sixty years only without fulfilling their old age. That's what the verse says. But in thousand years they will die at hundred years age, and that is a child. For the child shall die hundred years, hundred years child. Ah, hundred years is a old man's age. But in thousand years, sir, compared to the thousand years, hundred years is what? Ah, a child's age. Ten percent, that's all. And who dies at hundred years? What is he called as? But the sinner, being hundred years old, shall be accursed. Ivano dies at the age of hundred years. He is a sinner, which means once the resurrection happens, each and every person will be given a minimum opportunity of hundred years to turn back to God. If he doesn't turn, then he is a sinner. He shall be accursed, and he shall die. Compared to the, all the human beings who are living for thousand years, this person's age will be compared to just a child. This judgment only is beautifully given to us in Matthew twenty fifth chapter verses thirty two to you see forty. Now let us read a few verses. Twenty fifth chapter thirty two and thirty three, brother. And therefore, him shall be gather all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats, and he. Shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. See, when uh, Jesus uh, comes, he shall gather the nations. He shall separate them one from another, as a goat from the sheep. The goat will be on the left, and the sheep on the right. What does it mean? Is it literally meaning that Jesus is going to come and do the separation literally between goat and sheep? No, this is not speaking of literal goat and sheep. This is a goat type of character. The sheep type of character is saying, "Okay, now when will this happen?" If you continue reading, it says, so "Jesus tells, uh, you see, huh? I was hungry, but you came and uh, you see gave me food." Uh, read, brother, verse thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, and thirty-nine, brother. Huh? Thirty-five to thirty-nine, brother. Thirty-five to thirty-nine. Okay. Hmm. Okay. For I was hungry, and you gave me some things to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. 
Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and gave you some things to drink? When he did was when when did we see you a stranger and invite you in our in our needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? Hmm. Continue. Hmm. Then the king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Ah, then he will... See? Thank you. Okay, brother. So he says, ah, I was hungry who came and gave me food. I was thirsty who came and gave me water. I was naked you came and clothed me. I was in prison, you came and visited me. So Jesus asked, uh, when the, this person will ask, Lord, when did we do for uh, all these things to you? Jesus says, whatever you do for one of this one, it is like doing to me. Based on this one only, many people do this. Uh, this is social work. They go to the prison, prison ministry. Oh, because why Jesus told you were in prison, you came and visited me. They give you, distribute food, uh, water, clothes in Christmas time and all. Uh. Why? Because Jesus said, no, you are angry. You gave me. If you don't give, then you will be cursed. If you give, you will be blessed. Based on this one only, so many people do all this hospitality work, NGO work, social work. Okay. Now, when this will happen, when this thing has to be done, when will uh, our Lord do it? When did Lord Jesus say that you should do it? Read Matthew 25, 31, brother. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Ah, when will this happen? When the Son of Man shall come in his glory. Jesus has already come. He is going to come. This is going to happen when Jesus is going to return the second advent. Then only all these things should be fulfilled. Now, before this only, if you go and do this one, how is it possible? Jesus himself never did this one. How did he, did he visit any jail? Did he give any clothes to any poor? He fed and he gave. That's all. Did he visit any home for the aged? Did he build any hospital? No. So these are things to be done in the kingdom, not now. So this is a not a literal statement at all. This is a parable. Because Jesus is not going to come literally to separate the goat and the sheep. So goat are a class of people and a sheep are a class of people. The sheep are a class of people who are docile, who are humble. You see? Who surrender themselves to the Lord. Who do good things. Like what? In the resurrection, everybody will be coming up in batches. So one batch has to receive another batch. They need to take care of them. Give them food. What food? Not little food. Food. Word of God. Jesus said, no, man shall not live by bread alone. Give them the word of God. Give them the truth. The water of truth. The living waters. You see? Visit them in the prison. Prison house means death. Pray for the dead that they may come back to life. You see? And a stranger. Nobody has so many friends. You see, they are all strangers. So many people are there. Some people have relatives. A lot of other people who don't have anybody. Pray for them. The day must come in the resurrection. This is what Jesus said. The sheep people, we show their love and express love one for another. But the goat class will be stubborn. No. I won't pray for my grandmother because she never gave me anything. You see, so this is the God's spirit. So slowly in the thousand years, when the knowledge shall be given to them, practically if they don't implement in their life or practically if somebody implements in their life, slowly these two groups of people will be separated. And what will be the reward? This is the trial. So what will be the reward? The reward is that for the sheep class, God is going to give the kingdom. And for the goat class, they are going to be destroyed in second death. Let us read Matthew 25, 34. Brother, huh? then, shall, then shall the king 
say unto them on his right hand, Come, a blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. See, what did uh, Jesus say? For the sheep class on my right hand, blessed uh, of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Did he say, come to heaven? No. He said, kingdom. Where is the kingdom? Jesus taught us the prayer, no, brother. What is the Lord's prayer, brother? Our father? Huh? What is the Lord's prayer? Peter, brother. Who is in heaven? Your kingdom will come. Your Very will be done. Very good. Very good, isn't it? You see, let thy kingdom come. May thy will be done on earth, even as it is done in heaven. So, kingdom will come into the world. In that kingdom only, these will inherit the kingdom. Prepared from the foundation of the world. This is the kingdom which God has been preparing. We are waiting. So, the sheep class, good people, will stay on the earth. They won't go to heaven, dear brethren. See, this is the judgment of the world. What about the wicked? Read verse 41, brother. Huh? Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, a course into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. See? What fire? Everlasting fire. Does you say that? Uh, you see, tormenting fire, hell fire. No. Everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Now, where is the devil? Where is the fallen angels cast off? Let us read. Huh? That one in Revelation 20, verse 14, brother. Uh. And dead and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. See? This is the second death. That means the lake of fire means second death. That means these people will go to everlasting destruction. The second death from where there will be no resurrection at all. So this is the judgment that the actual Bible speaks. Okay. Then... Uh, there is one verse in Revelation now where books will be opened. A white throne judgment. Now what is the meaning of that one? Let us read Revelation chapter 20 verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were upon, and another book was upon, which is the book of life. And the dead were in jaws out of these things, which were written into the books according to their works. Mm. See, here the verse clearly says, brother, they were judged according to the things which are written in the book. You know, you can say no. Okay, now we all know that Revelation is not a direct language. This is all a symbolic language written in the book of Revelation. In Revelation, it says our beast is a literal beast. No. Yeah, he's speaking of the dead, small and great. So, this is all completely coded language. We need to understand everything. So, white uh, throne means what? White means what? Purity. Throne means judgment. So, it's going to be a right judgment. So, the dead, uh, small and great means what? Who are the small people? Who are the great people? In your place, who is the small people? Who is the great people? Great people means who have a lot of money, a lot of power, good position. You see, who are in authority, they are called as the great people, no? Aha, uh -huh. this is what the Bible says. The humble, the poor, as well as the rich, the great, you see, the proud, the humble and proud, both all the people are dead in God's sight. They will all come in the resurrection. Then what will happen? Books were opened, it seems. All right. Now, the people were judged as per what? Books or book? Read that verse again, Buddha. Read that verse 12 and answer me the question. The people were judged by what? Were they judged by the books or were they judged by the book? Got my question, Peter Buddha? Now read verse 12 in Revelation 20 and answer me this question. You got the question clearly? Revelation 20 verse 12. But did you hear my question properly? Yeah, I think. Ah, okay. Now you read, you tell me the answer. Revelation 20, okay, 2012. Hmm. Okay. 
And I saw the dead, great, and small standing before the throne, and books were open. Hmm. And another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead was lost. Hmm. And I think book. Yeah, books are or book. Are? Book, book of life. Continue. Uh, where from where you stop? The continue and concentrate. Ah. Uh. And the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. In the books. Books. Now you tell me whether they were judged as per the books or book. Books. Books. Very good. So they were not judged as per a single book. They were judged as per the books. Now you need to understand which is these books. Sir? You see, let me tell me in the Bible how many books are there? Two. In the Bible only two books are there. Ah. Books. Ah. Sixty-six. Very good. Sixty-six books. Sir. This is a books. Sir. Now, the, is this Bible open to everybody or is it sealed? What? Can the can the Bible be understood by everybody? Can everybody understand yes. the Bible? Y yes or no? Everybody. Um, understand? No. No. Very good. Read Isaiah twenty nine eleven and twelve. Isaiah 29? 11 and 12. 11 to 12. Okay, 11 to 12. For you, this old version, vision is not but the words still in the school read and say to him read this please he will answer i cannot it is sealed mm, it oh. is sealed sealed uh -huh. now read daniel 12 9 pardon please sorry daniel 12 9 12 chapter verse 9 Okay, twelve nine. Twelve nine. He replied. He replied, Go your way, Daniel. Because the words are closed off and sealed mm. until mm. the time of. So, Bible is sealed. So, nobody can understand the Bible until God reveals it through the Holy Spirit. Correct, no, brother? Yes. Ah, so, in the thousand years, this book's Bible will be opened for the whole world. Now, it is closed for the world. Then, what will happen? Other book of life was opened, it seems. Now, what is this book of life? What is this book of life? Everybody thinks that book of life means everybody's deeds will be recorded there. Eh? If all our deeds are recorded in heaven, book is sufficient. Ah? Uh, yeah. Book of life means what? We need to read from the study from the Bible. For the Bible, which is the dictionary, brother? Huh? Peter, brother, for the Bible, which is the dictionary? If you have any questions from the Bible, where should you search the answers for? From the Bible. If you have any question from the Bible, where should we search the answer, brother? In the Bible. Correct. So, Bible, for the Bible, Bible is the dictionary. Okay? Yes. Now, which is this uh, book of life? Moses said, no. Lord, huh? please remove my name from the book of life. Correct? Huh? 
Have you read it or not? Read it. Exodus 32, 32. Exodus 32, 32. Okay. Exodus 32, 32. But now, but now, please forgive their sin. But if not, then pull me out of the book you have written. Oh. See, he is saying, remove my name from the book of life. If you read the other uh, KJV, it clearly says book of life. You see, which is the book of life? Huh? What is the where where God has written everybody's name? <laughs> he has written in the book, correct, number there? Yes. Now, which is this book? Does God need a book to record everything? No. Ah, then which is his book? If you see, his mind is his book. Okay, we need book because we don't have so much of memory power. But God has got so much of memory power; everything he can record it in his mind itself. Moses was saying, please blot out my name from your book, your mind. That is what Malachi 3.16 says. See, brother, Malachi 3.16. That is called as book of remembrance, Malachi 3.16. Malaki 316. Hmm. Okay. Then those who fear the Lord talk with each other and the Lord listen and hear. A school of remembrance was written in his presence hmm. concerning. Those who fear the Lord and honor his name. Mm. So what was written, brother? What book was written? Book of? Your book of remembrance. Very good. Book of remembrance good, brother. So remembrance is what? Mind. So God has kept every record in his mind. So in thousand years, everybody shall be judged as per the deeds written in the book means as per the Bible. As per the Bible, they shall be judged. You see, and whoever's name has to be written, are retained in God's mind, they will retain. And every rest of the people will be destroyed in second death. This is what the Bible says of judgment. Then the question comes, what about the sin which the people commit now? Is there no punishment for them? They steal, they do dakaiti, they kill, they murder, they spoil somebody's family. They do war, they fight, they quarrel, isn't it? What is the punishment for them? The Bible says only one punishment. You know what is that one? Death. Death is the punishment. But beyond death, can we give any punishment, brother? No. No. That is the final punishment which God says. Romans first chapter 24 to 32. You can read later. It clearly says, all those who do these things are guilty of death. But I don't think apart from death, we can give any more punishment. So death is the ultimate. So what is the good that man is learning now? You see, they are gaining good experience of evil. They are either building the character or spoiling the character. You see, now if a person doesn't behave in a good manner or doesn't cultivate good characters, in Christ's kingdom, it will be very difficult for him because he has to leave all the bad character, then learn the good character and come to Christ. But for such a person, it might take very long time. But if a person has learned so many good characters now itself, you see, in Christ's kingdom, it will be much easier for him to come to Christ like this. So this is the subject about judgment. This is what the Bible says about judgment. Bible doesn't say that uh, people will be judged and sent to hell or heaven. Okay? So God bless these words. If you have any doubts, any questions, you can ask brother. Any questions, put with that. No, thank you. Okay. Hope you understood.
Yes. Okay, I'll send you the YouTube link. Please watch the video. Any questions, uh, any doubts here, we can ask. Okay, brother?